Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Are you well this morning? Are you glad to be alive? <laughs> you don't sound. Oh, you want me to tell you if you're happy and you know? For the Father up above is looking. If you're happy and you know. The Bible says the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. Because the right hand of our God is exalted and it does victoriously. Amen. Same Bible says the shout of a king is in the midst. Says that God has gone up with a shout. <laughs> the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. Sio sauti ya manunguniko ama sauti ya maombolezi. Sema tutapiga kelele hatuachi. Eh. Sometimes you just need to shout. I hope you know who is with you. Him in whom you live. At all do we, we are not in the spirit and of the spirit. We live in the spirit. We are in him. Tafakari, tafadali. We live in him. It's a wonderful morning. It's a day that the Lord has made. All right, let's get into the word. What were we talking about last week? can't hear you kingdom 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 what did he say about the kingdom he said this is sunday school all right yes. if you have outgrown school what did we say about the kingdom? I'm a king given the kingdom. You're a king given. given the kingdom. Right. So we are kings. Sisi ni wafalme. Nasema lakini mbona? Wachana na mbona. Sisi ni wafalme. I told you scripture says, I think it's 2 Corinthians 13, either verse 8 or 9, that you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. That once he has spoken, twice have I heard. It says, for we can do nothing. <laughs> we can do nothing against the truth. 
but for the truth. Everything serves the truth. Even the one that the enemy is fashioning, God has a working whereby he's able to subdue, to lay down, to put down everything to serve his purpose. So don't be scared of anything. Atahile sila ambayo adui anachemusha. Wakati anachemusha bwana anamuona. Says he who sits in the heavens shall laugh. I told you you need to know in whom you live. That's why we rejoice. Okay, kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. What else did we say for those who are in class? Yes, sir. It does no? Oh, it has no gender. I heard it has no agenda. Agenda. I was wondering which kingdom is this. Thank you. Thank you. I want to back benches here on a pata. Gineno mekapa karib na mimi na mutaki kutoa hoja. Your back benches in the wale olukona na sumbua walimu. Thank you, sir. Kingdom has its values, it has its culture. And there's no gender in this kingdom. We are all sons of God. All right? Let's use the terminologies in the Constitution. We are all sons of God. You say, but I'm a, I'm a woman, I'm a lady. We are all his offspring. Sons just means what has sprung off. Offspring. It has nothing to do with gender. His son has nothing to do with male or female. So when you go out there, Phoebe, you say, I'm a son of God. Not I'm a daughter of God, no. We said you can do nothing against the truth. He only backs the truth. Paul said, speaking the truth as it is in Christ Jesus. The truth as it is in the word. Last one. Yes, sir. Good one. Clap for this guy. Clap nicely. Yeah. Kingdom is a sovereign rule of a ruler of our territory. So we say the kingdom for you to be a king, you have to have a domain. There's no king without territory. There's no king who just flies around. Za we ni mfalme wa wapi? Ni mapanda mimi niko katikati ya boda. Ya Tanzania na Kenya. A king needs territory. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. Kingdom. Psalm 103, verse 19. Psalm 103, verse 19. Just want to give us some context a bit for those who have not been with us. Psalm 
Brother Joel, good to see you. One of three, verse 19, the Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. That the Lord has established his kingdom in the heavens and his kingdom has established his throne, sorry, and his kingdom rules over Role. Psalm 45 verse 6 says, Your throne, O God, is forever. We'll just run through this. Psalm, 1, Psalm 93 verse 1. The Bible says, The Lord reigns, is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he has clothed himself the world also is established that it cannot be moved verse 2 your throne is established of old you are from everlasting and give us some 145 you can also read some 47 verse 2 some 47 verse 8 God reigns over the nations. God is seated on his holy throne. Psalm, one, Psalm 11 verse 4, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. Psalm 113 verse 5, who is like unto the Lord our God, the one enthroned on high. Psalm 145, please. Psalm 145. Verse 1 to 3, then we'll jump to verse 9 to 13. Mm -hmm. A praise of David, I will extol you, O my God. My God, O King, and I'll bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you. Why don't you read with me? It's gone. Go on, go on, read. Verse nine, let's move to verse 9. Let's read, let's read. The Lord is good to all. Read like you have a voice. Uh, 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 uh. Class, let's read like we have a voice. Yeah. Go on. Until verse 13. Shall bless you. Mm-hmm. Verse 13. So he started by saying his kingdom rules over all. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens. His kingdom rules over all. This place, the Bible says that his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. If you're a student of history, there were a number of kingdoms. The Egyptian kingdom, the Assyrian, the Babylonian, the Greeks. The Roman, but they've all ceased. But scripture says his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. 
Everlasting is a combination of two words, ever and lasting. It just means that it lasts forever. In simple English. Are we together? His kingdom. So it's not about to be overthrown. He's not in danger of being overthrown. There are kings who have been overthrown and they are to take off. I don't remember the exact word in English. But I understand what I'm saying. There are kings who are not sitting so well on the throne because there are elements that have the capacity to overthrow them. But this one, scripture says, Your throne, O God, is forever. From everlasting to everlasting, His throne endures. Just to let you know, verse 12 says, To make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty, splendor of his kingdom. This is a kingdom that subdues all other kingdoms. Nothing stands in its way and succeeds. One king of one of the greatest kingdoms, you would know him, Nebuchadnezzar, made some statements. And this kingdom that is everlasting, there was a pronouncement And an immediate change of status, diet, environment. That a man survived on a diet of grass. Of course, we still eat. Okay, leave that one. But a man survived on a diet of greens, herbs. He was told until you know that the most high rules in the kingdom of man and sets it over it whoever he wills. The Bible says, but our God is in the heavens. He has done whatsoever he pleases. Scripture says, who is he that says and it comes to pass unless the Lord commands it. Who is he? Who is he that says? Even Elon Musk with all his money. Even that which he has is God's. He didn't arrive here with it. He has made it from what God has made. Okay. So this is the kind of a kingdom that we are talking about. We said kingdom is a combination of two words, king and domain. King and domain meaning territory. Okay. He said God's original intention was very simple. He wanted to extend his invisible heavenly kingdom to the visible earth. Okay. 
So he makes man in his own image and likeness. What did we say about image? Yeah? Good. Clap for her. That would encourage you to revise and stay on top of your notes. When the Bible says meditate on these things, it means chew them. It means think on them. It means rehearse them when you're all by yourself. What did we say about likeness? Thank you. Likeness has to do with function. So we are made in his image, character. And we are made in his likeness, function. A function like God. I bear his image, his character, because I've proceeded from his spirit. The Bible says the spirit is life. It says, because you are sons, he has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Father has to do with source, crying, Lord, you're my source. Acknowledging. Hmm. Acknowledging that we are of him. We proceeded from the womb of his spirit. Born of his spirit. Says washed in his blood. The singer sang. Born of his spirit. Born of his spirit. Told him these children. Except you be born again. You cannot enter the kingdom of God. It says, what is born of spirit is spirit. So I am spirit because I'm born of spirit. So God had that idea. Beautiful, wonderful idea. Reproduce the kingdom of heaven in the visible realm. So gives his sons, his offspring. We were all in Adam when Adam was made. Scripture says even Levi paid tithes because he was in the loins of Abraham. So we all proceeded. So God makes Adam first man. All others were reproduced. Adam was made. But Adam puts Adam in the garden of his presence. Draws the lines for Adam. Tells him, now you are to govern. He says, let us make man in our own image. Let them have dominion. That's why we are dominion assembly. Let them have dominion. Let them manage. Let them be in charge. God gets glory when you're in charge. God is pleased when you're in charge. You're not under circumstances. So 
So he tells Adam, you can eat all this, but this one, leave it alone. Why would you have 5,000 to eat and still want one? So Adam and Eve are under God's government, God's governing influence. Okay. But the deceiver the Bible says he lies from the beginning. The deceiver shows up and I was trying to think the other day. It may not help you a lot, but I thought. Because after the issue, the Lord tells the snake, you from now you go on your belly so as a logical reasoning man i want to guess that maybe the snake used to walk on feet might not be something that is very helpful but you know scripture invites you the lord invites you to use the mind that he has given you to reason and think through so this snake shows up. And the amazing thing is that the woman does not find it old. A dog barks and another dog decodes the information. A cat meows and another cat is able to decode the information and they have a conversation. All right? Now how do you start having a conversation with a snake? And more so to do with the thing that you've been told to keep off. The enemy comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Could in the throne the Most High, whose throne is forever. So he comes down to try and dethrone the government that God has set on the earth. Says the heavens are the Lord's, the earth has he given, not to the devil, to the children of men. Gave us territory so that we can exercise our kingship. That as he rules in the heavens, we may rule on earth. Under the influence of a spirit. So she has a conversation with a snake. For you, if a cow started talking to you today, you run. Unless you are bold enough to command. And speak. Most of us will find the shortest exit from that location. And come and remember later that we have dominion. That you ought not to have run. Nehemiah told them, should a man such as I run? He said, no, I will not run. So. So they fell. We said when man fell from grace, he lost a kingdom, not religion. When man fell from grace, he lost a kingdom. Then the devil became the God of this world. Adam delivered it to him. When he declared independence from the government of God, from the influence of his spirit, says as many as are led by the spirit, these are the sons of God. The evidence of you proceeding 
from God, being a son of God, is your ability to yield to his spirit and his leading. Can't say you're a son of God and you walk any howly. You talk any howly. The things that proceed from your mouth are not fit for edification. You're part of every gossip. You're part of... Eh? Instead of using your mouth to bless... You is cursing. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about somebody else. You guys are good. <laughs> because I'm not just talking to you. I'm also talking to those who are joining us from elsewhere. So man lost a kingdom. From being a king, he became a servant to sin. Became a slave. And I told you, the fall was so marvelous. That today man runs away from dogs. Man runs away. Sometimes even cats. If a cat gets very angry, some of us will run away. Man runs away from snakes. The same man who was given dominion. That he may reign on earth as God reigns in the heavens. Say, told, have dominion over every creeping thing. Man became a pale shadow of who he was. But thank God for the second Adam. Thank God for the second Adam. The enemy thought he had put one over God. But he's the only wise God, our Savior. Said even this one, I told you you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. Even this one. So okay, he sends his son. That's where I want to start today. Sent his son to restore to us, not religion, not born again, not even Christianity. I'm not a Christian. Hey, Pastor, what are you? He has not called me a Christian. This thing called Christianity. I'm a kingdom agent. I'm an ambassador. That's in the book. Say so there they were called first Christians. It's not the Lord who called them. They are outsiders who call them. Now everybody is Christian. Even those who have no image. Who have no likeness. Religion. It's gotten so mixed up that people don't want to come to it. But I looked at what Jesus said when he started, when he came. Mm. When he came in Matthew. We looked at it last week, Matthew 4. It says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Repent. Change your way of thinking. For the kingdom is near. Luke 8, verse 1. From verse 1. Luke 8, from verse 1. Mm -hmm. 
It says, now it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village preaching and bringing the glad tidings, the good news of the kingdom of God. Not the good news of born again. We said last week, born again is the entry point. We've been selling born again for too long. And I told you, you only say it born again once. To a guy called Nicodemus, a teacher of the law, who came by night because he was scared of the Pharisees. And he asked him, how can I enter? Not into religion. How can I enter into the kingdom of God? It was a response to a question about entry into the kingdom. It was not a message to be preached out here. He came, he went from every city to every village preaching and bringing the glad tidings, the good news of the kingdom. Of God. The message is not even Calvary. It's not even that. If, if you had five million shillings in the bank today, just for example. And you can only access it through a checkbook. And somebody steals your checkbook. Okay? And I come and I overpower the, that somebody. And I bring you back your checkbook. What is the good news? What is the good news? Is the good news the fact that you have your check back? Are you getting it? Is the good news the fact that you have a check back? Checkbook back. The checkbook is a means to a greater end. You can't eat checkbook. I have enough checkbooks in the office. Some of them, there's no money in those accounts. You can write a million shillings there. But there's no million shillings in the bank. So the good news is not Calvary. The good news is that through Calvary, we got access to what was stolen from us. That is a kingdom. So don't preach the access. Don't preach the checkbook. It's what the checkbook allows us to access the kingdom of God. Been preaching the door for too long. I told you as good as a house is, you can even put Mvule, the one from DRC Congo, Lubumbashi, Ukondani. But you don't dance at the door every day saying, what a door, what a door, wow. Pure hardwood from the depths of the forest in Congo. They might relocate you to a place where they help people like that. If we find you dancing at the door, you might dance the first day. But it's what lies behind the door. says he went from city to city declaring the good news of the kingdom of God. That that which we lost, that which Adam, our father, lost in the garden was restored to us 
that now man can reign on earth. The Bible says they that receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, right positioning with God, shall reign on earth, not in heaven. You're busy singing when you all get to heaven. What a glorious day. When we all see Jesus. No. He doesn't want you up there. Some of us are so quick we want to check out. We don't want to exercise dominion over the territory. The Bible says in Isaiah, I think 53, verse 12, it says he shall see of the labor of his soul and shall be satisfied. He shall see what it availed for at Calvary that we can enter into the kingdom and walk as gods on the earth. Kingdom. Kingdom. Instead of preaching the benefits of the kingdom, we are preaching the door. Come get born again. Says he went from every city to every village, bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom that man doesn't need to be under the oppression of the enemy anymore that you don't need to fear you don't need to be under the oppression of sickness and disease says the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes I am healed the Bible says the inhabitants of that city shall not say I am sick. I started thinking the other day, if I live in God, whatsoever is not in God has no permission to be in me. No, you don't like that one. You know, unless, unless you start it says repent, have a radical shift of the mind. That in him I live. Now I need to observe him. If I live in him, I need to observe, to learn, to consider him. And then look at my life. Some of us can't sleep. To devils, to demons. Tunatembea, tembea. Na kwaribia wakati. Na nyonga nyonga. Have you seen a monkey attempting to to nyonga a lion? Have you seen But if you don't know in whom, if you don't know what you have received, Hebrews 12, 20, is it 28? It says, we also have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. The gospel of the kingdom. The kingdom of God. That's what I want to bring to us this, this afternoon. The goal is to promote the benefits of the kingdom. How many of us have tried to apply for the green card here. How many? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Why were you trying to run away from this country? <laughs> no, it's not. It, it's okay. Um, it's just a question. Why did you feel that you wanted to go 
to that land. Let's be honest. It's okay. I also desired it's just that I didn't get to do it. Why did you fail? I'm talking to you who tried. These other guys, maybe they have no idea. At least you, you had some idea and you tried. Why did you? Let me ask you then if you don't want to volunteer. There's nothing wrong. You're answering for them. Have you tried? Oh, you stopped. But did you try? You tried. Okay. Why are Africans risking everything? Drowning in the Mediterranean. To cross over to Italy, to Spain. Risking everything. Enduring the worst of conditions. Just to reach the source of a land they believe has a quality of life that they can't get where they are. Isn't that so? We want to go to America because there's a quality of life that they offer that we don't have here. It's just a truth. It's the time I wanted to go to Canada. I went through the process. So I've also tried. At least I've seen the country. I didn't get to go. But at least I've. There's something else. It's because of the quality of life that citizenship in those countries offer. That's the attractive thing. Some of those countries offer citizenship to people who have the ability to invest. Watch how in Guyana. Some Africans who go visit, I'm going for graduation. And that's the last, sometimes even old women and men in their 50s and 60s and they start hiding like fugitives and it's a good thing there they don't ask you for id every other day so so long as you keep off and stay within the law you can live there for 10 years under the radar but the benefits of citizenship will not be available to you. That which you thought by being there, you only get it when you arrive there legally and you go through a process. I've watched documentaries of guys who from the Congo, I don't know, they went to South America all the way through some painful paths and processes to get to Canada. 40-something days being smuggled like contraband or illegal goods just so that you can Get to that country. Success to opportunities. Some places free education. Some places the quality of health care. Some places environment. Like the brother went to the U.S. And all of a sudden he realized... The generational curses don't operate in the U.S. And he's done so well for himself. So sometimes the environment to do well. Opportunities. That you can play cat and mouse with the authorities just so that.
It's about the rights, the privileges of being a citizen of those countries. When they show their passports, I read the other day about the U.S. Embassy and the way they are turning down visa requests or applications and they're <laughs> and the kind of reasons sometimes they use I remember once I had a fully paid trip from the International Coach Federation to go for a conference in Atlanta and I applied for a visa and I was denied Everything. Yani unaona tikiti ya ndege ndiyo hiyo ilikuwa nayo. Baka tarehe inapita. But the conference is three days. The chairman has traveled. We went with him for the appointment. I was a secretary of the coaching federation. Kenyan chapter. The second day, I still had hope that maybe that thing took six months. So annoyed, wrote them enough emails. Say, I've been to your country a few times. I've never stayed or stayed in your country. I've always been a law-abiding entrant. I didn't hide Still say no. We'll give it to you when we are ready. And so went my trip. A free trip. Free hotel accommodation. It's like that. While they get here to our airport, they apply at the airport and they are never turned back. I pray the Lord raises us up. It's bad to be despised. To be handled without dignity. Because they think. And we've made them to think so. I was once I was going to Italy. It's just a point. Get the point. And I have my passport. It has all the visas from the other countries. And they gave me a three-month visa. One way. You can all enter and get out. You can't go back again. And I'm saying, even if I was being paid to live in that country, I don't want. But they so feel that you so want to. There are guys there who are suffering even more than guys in this country. But the perception that the quality of life they offer. So we don't work on our own. Quality of life. Luke 16, 16. Quality of life. So I don't want religion. I don't want this Christianity thing. I want the kingdom. Says the law and the prophets were proclaimed until John. Give me an KJV, please. Thank you. Thank you. The law and prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God has been preached. And everyone is pressing into it. The kingdom has been preached. Why aren't people pressing into the kingdom the way some of our brothers and sisters are pressing into those countries? Risking everything. Go watch documentaries. Sometimes 
Some things are not by revelation. Just go watch. You see some of them into camps. Some of them jumping over razor wires. The desperation. So I ask the question. Is the quality of life we have modeled or we have put on display enough to get people pressing into this kingdom? You tell them, come get born again. They look at you. Look at your life. You're always down. You're always oppressed. You're always complaining the same way they're complaining. Gossiping the same way they're gossiping. Sometimes more broke than they. They say, you want us to come and have this? Say, no thanks. Watch it to back you up at two core. Has the quality of life, the lifestyle we have patterned, has it been strong enough to get people pressing in from the world that they can see, see the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. They can see your joy. They can see your gladness. They can see you walking in uprightness. They can see. The evidence of a life that is under new governance. It says of the increase, the government shall be upon his shoulders. And of the increase of that government and peace, there shall be no end. Now they can see. They can see a life to be desired. In the early days of the church, it was said, nobody dared to join them just like that. It was so evident. Have we modeled the benefits of this kingdom? That somebody can see citizenship in this kingdom is something to covet. Honestly, nobody knows, nobody knows, nobody knows the pain, the struggles. Well, he says, my mouth shall be filled with thanksgiving. His prayer shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, I'm a survivor. And that's the same song they're singing. Say, sing us them songs of Zion. We have our own songs. I told you. There's a fixation of the mind that I'll sing and praise the Lord. Revelation 12, verse 10. The Bible says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation. Now is come salvation and strength. And the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Now is come.
For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuse him day, then before God, our God day and night. Now is come. Not tomorrow. Says now are we the sons of God. Now are we the offspring of God. Now. The church is not the kingdom. Just make something clear. The kingdom existed before the church. Is that understandable? Adam was given a kingdom before there was church. Some of us think the solution is in joining a church. I mean, I'm a member of Dominion Assembly Church. And you wear that with pride. And it's all right. Viema kujifraisha. But I'm a member, I'm a partaker, I'm an heir of the kingdom. I've received a kingdom. It's not by joining a church. You know, there were churches before Christ started his church. Ding dong. There were churches. That's why he said, On this rock I'll build my church. This is not their watch, this is my watch. Okay? Because if I say this is their watch, all the others that you have cease to be. If I say I am the Lord, when it says is the, the Lord, it means all others are subject to his lordship. Caesar had his own church. Was ecclesia called out once, called to be with him. Pilate was part of the ecclesia. Those who knew his mind, those who knew his will, those who were so with him that he can send them and they can execute his agenda. So church was a common term then. That's why he had to say, I'll build my church. The church. How many have ever bought insurance? Let me see. Okay. The rest of us, to find your BD. It's not a lack of faith. It's good planning. And the church said amen. Some of us are so faithful, full of faith. That we feel certain things are not of God. No. Anyway. When you bought insurance, you possibly didn't go directly to the company, isn't it? Maybe this, you bought car insurance the other day. You didn't go to Jubilee at the headquarters, isn't it? 
Possibly there's an agent who sold to you the insurance. So it's an agency that services you on behalf of the insurance company. The insurance company doesn't move. It sends out agents. The church is God's local government. It's an agency of heaven to service the earth on behalf of the government of heaven. To advance the king domain of the one who rules in the heavens. To advance his agenda, to sell his policies to those who are lost, to let them know that now has come salvation and the kingdom of our God. So the church is not the end. This is not the end. The church is the means. The kingdom is the end. Borrowed a lot of this from brother who passed on, Dr. Miles Monroe. You can find it online. Said something that amazed me. I come into that. Matthew 6, 33. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. He doesn't even say, seek me first, Jesus the Christ. I know that might work on our, bed, our religion a bit. He doesn't say, seek me first. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. The governing influence of God. The rulership of God. Seek first to be submitted to God. For this purpose I came. He says I must preach the gospel of the kingdom to the other cities. Because for this purpose I came forth. So that the citizens who lost their citizenship through Adam can now come back into the kingdom. Even Jesus finish listed the benefits of the kingdom say so the people of the world worry about what they will wear what they will eat they are so full of worry whether the economy would hold tomorrow But he says, not so for you. He says, once you have alignment with the kingdom, the ruling influence of God, then worry stops. Then you know that they that trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. I stopped worrying. Says they, he will keep in perfect peace. Ah, them whose mind is stayed on him and his kingdom. Says the kingdom of our God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. That there's peace in this kingdom. There's rest from the oppression of worry and fear and torment. 
that you can go out as the agency of the kingdom and sell it. That I can sleep. He says, because he gives his angels charge over me. I can sleep well. I'm an ambassador. Ambassadors have security. Eh? Hey, hey. Ambassadors have security. If you didn't know you have security, why are you afraid? Jesus was in the ship. He said, Why were you afraid? Where is your faith? I am with you in this ship. I rule the raging of the seas. I walk upon the wings of the wind. Why were you afraid? Oh, what if they, what if they, what if, what if, what if they suck me? If they suck me, then nothing happens without his knowledge. I told you. Maybe sometimes he just wants to move you from that season. And sometimes the way is through sucking. Because if you are not sucked, some of us will not move. I leave this job. Shows the benefits of the kingdom. That's what we need to preach to people. Come to this kingdom. There's freedom from oppression. There's peace in this kingdom. You can walk boldly in this kingdom. Because I'm an ambassador. Says he daily loads me with benefits. He commands victories for me. He rejoices over me with singing. Don't sell to them the door. Don't sell to them born again. Sell to them the kingdom. Benefits of the kingdom. Philippians 3.20 I'm finishing for now. Philippians 3.20. Let's move, let's move please. Philippians 3.20. It says for our citizenship is in heaven. Your day is a Ghana. For our citizenship is in heaven. I'm a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Thank you. Where? Screen. Behave. I need to finish. For our citizenship is in heaven. From which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our citizenship. citizenship in America. And your citizenship. It's okay if that's where you want to go, it's fine. Please do what you can. Man does what they can. With what they know. Our citizenship is in heaven. So I'm here on second mend. I'm an official of the government of heaven. You are a government official. So si tembe uko tu ovyo ovyo kikula miwa, unakula mitura kwa barabara. You are a government official. You are an ambassador. When is the last time you saw an ambassador at Amtura joint? <laughs> and then when you have problems with your stomach. <laughs> Walk 
circumspectly with wisdom because you know who you are you know who you carry you know what you carry so you are mindful of where you show up i'm a government official i'm representing the government of god Sometimes we don't know. Miles Rose spoke about the kingdom of ignorant kings. Sometimes we don't know. You don't know that you're a king. So you walk anyhow. Wengine wakiwa katika masengenyo, umengia huko. Well, the Bible says, let no corrupt communication come from your mouth, but such as is good for edification. Ya kujenga. Kama hauna kitu ambayo itasaidia kujenga, tafadhali nyamaza. Even a fool when he's silent, he's thought wise. You don't have to speak every time. Be mindful of the kingdom that you carry. What you have received. Because of bad salesmen, salesmen, people don't want to come to the kingdom. Sema ile kanisa ile wale wale wa makelele lakini mienendo yao Haina tofauti na wale wa giza. The same things they desire and lust after are the same things you lust after. And then you want them to come join you. Sema tu ni vile leo unasema tu umeokoka lakini wewe ni wetu. Hakuna tofauti. Wetu kukuangalia vizuri. DNA ni ya kwetu. Kingdom. Kingdom. Benefits of the kingdom. Send so this kingdom. We have dominion. I'm a king who reigns on the earth. Say, so where is the crown? It's on my head. You need eyes of the spirit to see. I want to stop. I'll stop there. Luke 22, verse 29 to 30. He says, And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my Father has appointed to me. He says, I assign to you a kingdom. I assign to you, I bestow upon you, not a religion, but a kingdom. That's why we are raising kingdom champions. That you can be a champion for this kingdom. That you can be put on display. As a prototype or an example. Of kingdom life. Kingdom lifestyle. When they sell to you the holiday packages and they show you the coast and they show you the, the sands and the ocean, they are selling an experience. That we can sell this experience called kingdom. continue from there on Sunday. Next Sunday. My prayer. My 
prayer. We say to seek is to pursue, to consider, to learn. That we acquaint ourselves with the benefits of the kingdom. And that the Lord will help us to rise and walk in the fullness of the experience of what it means to be a kingdom citizen. Let's be up on our feet.